Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope your EPFO preparation is going on fine as hardly a month is left now for our examination. On 2nd of July we have our EPFO examination. So from tomorrow or from today itself hardly 30 days are left for our examination. So in last video we were discussing computer PYQs and in that video we discussed 2016 questions and in 2016 we had only 5 questions from computer section but in EPFO 2020 question paper from computer section a total of 10 questions were asked. So in today's video let us discuss what were those 10 questions and whether we can be able or we should be able to solve them using our NCRT textbook. So the first question which you can see on your screen is what is the equivalent decimal value of binary number. So in this question they have given us a binary number and they are asking us to calculate its decimal value. Now you know what is a binary number the word itself says binary so it has only two numbers 0 and 1. So here in this number we can say there are only two numbers 0 and 1 which is known as binary and the decimal number is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so on. So these are the decimal numbers. So in this question they have asked us to find out the decimal value of binary number. Now first understand what is decimal uh, binary number and what is decimal number. A number with base 2 suppose some number is given and it has its base as 2. Suppose this is the number which they have given and it has the base 2. So that number is known as a binary number and the numbers with base 10 suppose if any number is given and it has base 10 then that number will be known as decimal number. So decimal numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. So these are decimal numbers and binary numbers are used in digital systems and they are represented by just two, digit, two digits 0 and 1. So any time when you see the word binary they will be represented by these two numbers 0 and 1. Now similar example is covered in our NCRT textbook. And here you can see they have asked us to convert 1101 into a decimal number. So they have given us the binary number and they have asked us to uh, convert it into decimal number. So same we can apply here and we can convert this number into a bin uh, decimal number. Now how we can write this into a decimal number. So first is 1 and then 1 into 2 raised to 5 because after 1 we have five more digits. So since it is binary, so it is having base 2. So 1 into 2 raised to 5 plus the next number is 0. So 0 into 2 raised to 4 because after 0 we have four more digits. Then again we have 1 and it will be 1 into 2 raised to 3 plus again we have 1. So 1 into 2 raised to 2 plus second last digit is 1. So 1 into 2 raised to 1 and the last digit is 0. So 0 into 2 raised to 0. So this is how we can convert the binary number into decimal number. So if you calculate this it will come 32 plus 0 plus 2 to the power 3 is 8. So 32 plus 0 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0. And when you calculate uh, add up all these numbers we get answer as 46. So it is very easy to convert the by a decimal uh, binary number into decimal number. So this time they may ask us to convert vice versa like they will give you the decimal number and they will ask you to convert into binary number. Moving on to the next question which one of the following basic operations for converting raw input data into useful information is not performed by computers. So basically computer performs four major operations or four basic operations and now what are those four basic operations first you can see here is the input we will provide some input to the system like through keyboard will type something so that is the input or through cd will provide some data to the computer it will read and it will give us the output so first basic operation is input so this is inputting then after providing input it will process the system will process the cpu will process the data or the input provided us by us and it will give us the output now that, that output can be in the form of printer audio file cd so 
output is one of the basic operation and at times the data which is there it can be stored also like we can store it in the form of cd or pen drive so storage is also one of the basic operations so input processing output and storage these are the four basic operations of any computer system so switching here is not a basic operation which is performed by the computers moving on to the next question which one of the following memories is extremely fast and acts as a high speed buffer between cpu and main memory so here the correct answer is cache memory so what is cache memory what is cache memory basically so cache memory is a small high speed buffer small high speed buffer now buffer between whom buffer between the buffer between our input and the main memory so cache memory is a small high speed buffer memory which is used to hold instructions temporarily during processing so here there is a screenshot from ncrt and as you can see it is clearly written to speed up the operations of cpu a very high speed memory is placed between cpu and primary memory known as cache so the same is what is they have asked in the question so the correct answer is d here next one is very easy which one of the following is not a web browser so on daily basis we all use uh, desktop pcs and laptops so we know that fedora is not a web browser so again it is covered in our ncrt textbook as well so we have some of the commonly used web browsers as google chrome internet explorer mozilla firefox opera etc so fedora is not the web browser next question is which one of the following represents 1 gb of information so simply they have asked what is 1 gb equal to so here again the screenshot from ncrt textbook and we know that 1 gb is equal to 1024 mb so 1024 mb is the correct answer here so go through, through this table this time they must they might ask you ask us what is 1 tb like that the next question is which one of the following is not a language translator now first understand what is mean by translator now see uh, computer understand only machine language so a translator is needed to convert a program which is written in assembly or high level language to machine language so what does this translator do this translator will convert source code by translator into machine understandable form which is called as machine code so basically this translator will convert the source code into understandable form which is called as machine code which is called as machine code and there are three types of translators assembler compiler and interpreter so assembler compiler and interpreter so linker is not a language translator again this screenshot i have taken from ncrt textbook and it very well covers the question which is asked here next question is which one of the following statements is correct a device driver of output devices so what does this device driver do now this is the image taken from ncrt textbook what is device driver so you know that uh, operating system is the one which will do the overall working of a computer but every day what is happening new devices and components are being added to a computer system and it is not possible for operating system to operate all of the existing and new devices where each device has its own characteristics so the responsibility for overall control operation and management of particular device at hard hardware level is delegated to device driver so what does this device driver do it interprets the computer output into user understandable form so b is the correct answer here so we can see that most of the questions are solvable using our ncrt textbook and the examiner has taken the textbook for framing the questions next question is which one of the following registers is used to keep track of next instruction to be executed again this question is covered in ncrt textbook and here it is written program counter a program counter keeps track of the next instruction to be executed so the correct answer is c here program counter now what is a register basically a register is a small amount of storage available on cpu 
whose contents can be accessed more quickly than the storage available elsewhere so in this question they have asked is which register is used to keep the track of next instruction which is to be executed so program counter is the register which is used for tracking the next instruction so c is the correct answer here moving on to the second last question which one of the following is not an audio file so they have asked which is not an audio file so swf is the correct answer here it is not an audio file it is basically adobe flash file it is basically adobe flash file format so swf is correct answer here it is not an audio file the remaining three are the audio files moving on to the last question this last question is basically from electronics so these kind of questions might be asked in examination now those who are from this electronics computer background they can answer this question but from people from other background unless they have read it somewhere it is difficult to answer for this question so which one of the following denotes a sequential electronic circuit that is used to store one bit of information so basically they have asked us a device which stores one bit of information so the correct answer here is flip flop so what is flip flop in electronics it is a circuit that has two stable states and that state is used to store information so this flip flip flop is also known as bistable device why bistable because it has two states two stable states which is used to store information so a flip flop stores a single bit of data binary digit data one of its two states represent one one state will represent one and the other state will represent zero so flip flop is the correct answer here so as we can see through this pyq analysis most of the questions were solvable from ncrt textbook so here again i will advise you don't ignore the basic books because upsc has to ensure level playing field for all aspirants apart from studying any coaching material do go through the ncrt textbooks because it is from ncrt books which examiner will be using to frame the questions so that's it in today's video in next video i will try to cover other subjects pyq so keep studying as only one month is left for our examination Thank you.